have clinics attached to them? No, we have just the one. We have one primary care clinic. Mm -hmm. um, we are very, very small, mm -hmm. which is why um, it's a good thing that good relationships with our community health centers on the Big Island. Uh -huh. So we really are starting to network and collaborate with them. Um, but on our, our satellite upon us, our outside sites, we have um, an outreach worker. Most have one outreach worker. Waimea has two outreach workers. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the process of uh, establishing more of those positions island-wide but we offer transportation from those areas to the local clinic or to all the way into Hilo if necessary. Um, and then we have also receptionists at each of those sites to do the scheduling, to answer questions if necessary. But it's just our one main primary clinic. A primary care clinic is in Hilo. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you give me an idea maybe about how many people are, are being serviced now at all of the different uh Island-wide, we're mm -hmm. servicing about 2,000 of uh, 2,000 Native Hawaiians mm -hmm. and their Ohana, and it is all based on self-report. Um, mm -hmm. We certainly we're not Kamehameha schools. We, you know, if, if you come in and say, "I would like services," I am Native Hawaiian, then we take that as truth, mm -hmm. um, and we offer services. <clears throat> we're unfortunately, you know, my understanding is it's about 45,000 Native Hawaiians on the Big Island, and right now we're hitting just over 2,000 where we're actually providing services. Um, so our our short-term and our long-term dream and goal is to really expand our services, um, establish some of those positions with luckily some additional funding that we received um, to make sure that we're offering that service island-wide to anybody that needs it. Yeah. We do hit a, hit a lot or, or provide a lot of education via outreach, um, or excuse me, health fairs, um, community fairs, those kind of things, but our actual one-to-one -one service is about that number, about 2,000. You know, I, I wanted to ask Michelle, uh, I had a great conversation recently with Dr. Ron Aloy. Um, Ron grew up uh, on Kilkaha Homestead. In fact, we were at UH at around the same time back in the late 60s, early 70s. And he was telling me that a big challenge, and you kind of touched on that, with our people is um, they don't ask for help. And, and then when they finally ask for help, you know, that's when things have gone from bad to worse. Um, one of right. your primary focus areas is education and, and getting out there and outreaching to people. Uh, how much of that do you see on a daily basis where, where folks come in and, you know, they're hila hila and uh, how do you deal with that? On a daily basis, I know certainly for our staff um, and again, especially for those that have been around for a while, you know, Auntie Edna, everybody knows Auntie Edna. so in the middle of the shopping mall or in the middle of the grocery store, they'll stop Auntie Edna and they'll ask her questions. So we do lots of impromptu kind of education in that arena um, where it's simply because they know the face and can ask the question, yeah. Um, as far as, we, we offer numerous classes that are ongoing, um, everything from, like I mentioned, my Kamala I, which is our diabetes education, um, and in that class, we bring in local professionals, podiatrists, dentists, mental health specialists, to talk a little bit about um, taking care of yourself in the area of diabetes in their specific arena, foot care, the importance of foot care as an example. Um, so we offer that class um, four times a year, and that's run right out of our Hilo office. Um, and then island-wide, we also do hypertension classes, smoking cessation classes, um, diabetes management, like I mentioned, um, obesity and, and nutrition management classes. So we have lots of education that's more formal. Um, and then all of our outreach workers are trained at various levels of like nutrition education as an example. So they also go into the schools and that again is an attempt to really focus on that prevention rather than intervention mm -hmm. um, and provide some nutrition education in the school systems as an example. I see, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Hardy, I'm sorry. No, you were no, going to I was just going to say, <laughs> education is, is critical because, uh, and that reflects uh, really our, our past presidents and our founders' vision, Byron Thompson, who saw education as, as the way to really change <clears throat> perceptions and attitudes of a community and to make them healthy and well. Uh, you, before you can do that, you need to have the education and internalize that and put it to use. So. Pinky always stressed to um, uh, Michelle's predecessor and others the importance of health education uh, and just how critical that was in the, in the development of programs addressing Hawaiian uh, health issues. 
One of the things I, I will say that Michelle sometimes is uh, too modest because the role the systems play <coughs> is extensive. Um, the, they, if you look at the Native Hawaiian Health Care Improvement Act, their responsibilities take them from perinatal to long-term care, elderly care, and everything in between. So <coughs> their mandate to provide uh, services to address health issues is really extensive. But what all of them have done is to focus in their respective communities on those issues that are most pressing. Um, one area, too, that <coughs> is slowly emerging as one that's very uh, important and one that more and more people are interested in is the whole uh, role of traditional healing practices and how that is related to, well, when you say traditional medicine to a doc, <coughs> if Josh was sitting here, <laughs> traditional medicine is Western medicine, so you always have to qualify that and say, no, no, I mean the traditional practices related to health. Okay, that would be like <coughs> Lapa'au, Lomi Lomi. Lapa'au, Lapa'au, Lomi Lomi, and uh, Kahea, and <coughs> some of the other practices that are out there. And more and more people are uh, uh, interested in, in looking at those, as well as the standard uh, care, uh, credit of care, standards of care. So, <coughs> you know, the systems are uh, looking at how best that can be integrated into their, their care service. Okay. You know, you, you guys have uh, really been fortunate to have such a, a great advocate in, in yes. Center in Inouye and Center in yeah. And our, our understanding was that even in the, um, the ARRA, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, mm -hmm. that there were funds for the program. I think for the state, what, a little, a little over 500,000? So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so each island uh, yeah. program, mm -hmm. like Michelle's, would receive a share of that? Yeah, how, how uh, the appropriation works uh, is that there's an appropriation made for Native Hawaiian health. And then <clears throat> the various components of that uh, health care uh, system, which are the five Native Hawaiian health care systems in Papadolokahi, and the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program, which we haven't talked about today, but which perhaps we should mention if there are people out there who are interested in going into health care. I know. <clears throat> one of the um, the issues is getting practitioners to practice in rural communities or to uh, uh, to move to rural communities. Well, one way you can address that is training people from those rural communities themselves because they are the ones that are going to live in those communities. <laughs> so <clears throat> one of the things that uh, at least our Native One Health Care uh, Scholarship Program does is attempt to find uh, people from the rural communities who are interested in going into healthcare, be it medicine, uh, medical degrees, MD or DOs, or nursing, or public health, or uh, dentistry, uh, <clears throat> uh, training them, getting them uh, through school, getting them their degrees, and then getting them back into those communities to practice. So I would encourage anyone uh, of your constituents out there that, that may have children or may be interested themselves in availing themselves to a new profession or a health profession to contact our Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program. Um, yeah, it's so wonderful <clears throat> to see, you know, we've got our med school and, you know, so many of our kids, because they're able, if they're interested in becoming doctors mm -hmm. or going into the medical profession, the fact that, you know, we have our own university here makes it, gives them access Right here. And yeah. it's very heartening, you know, we've got a lot of uh, Hawaiian kids coming out of the med school, coming out of the law school, so, mm -hmm. you know, we're slowly but surely... Is, the, the nation is there. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's there, yes. <laughs> it was brought to my attention, actually, yeah. that um, one of the families that I've worked with for a long time in the Puna area, the Kavaloas, um, Stanley and Cheryl, their son actually, I didn't realize, has graduated with a... Uh, as, a, as an MD, and now he is practicing back in Hilo for those very reasons. 